Here we are again, Robin the Sudoku Guy, with yet another tutorial. This is number clickety click 66. And in this particular tutorial, I'm going to be covering three uh, features. The first feature is what I call a 3x3 three three plus 1. The second one is a 3x3 three three plus 2. And the third one is a surprise. Okay, now... What I'm going to do is to look at these. These are separate uh, uh, scenarios. This is not a whole puzzle. This is, this is a, a row in a puzzle. So is this one. This is a block and this is another block. They are all separate entities, I suppose you could say. Some people have been writing to me and saying, oh, you made a mistake here, you made a mistake there, because they didn't hear what I said at the beginning. That these are not, this is not a real puzzle, but it's examples of a part of a puzzle. Now, we've done this before where we've uh, looked at a matching pair plus two equals another matching pair. Today, I'm going to be doing a three by three plus one and a three by three plus two, which becomes, when it's two empty cells, it becomes a matching pair. Let me show you. Let's have a look at this top row. Have you seen a 3x3 three three in there? Now you may say, remind me, what's a 3x3? Three three? I find I have to do this more often. A 3x3 three three simply means that there's only three numbers that can go in three cells. And in this case, did you see along here we have a 6, 9, 8, 9 and a 6, 8. Now one of those numbers has to go in one of those cells. That's a 3x3. Three three. Some people call it a triplet. Anyway, if you look at this row, I'm going to put a tick by the cells with the 3x3. Three three. Now the rule goes like this. If there are any other 6, 8 or 9s in this row in different cells other than the one of the 3x3 three three cells, you can get rid of them, you can remove them, you can eliminate them. So let's have a look and see what we can do here. First of all, uh, going on this way, there's, a, there's an 8 in here. That can go, so that makes this a 2. Good, let's put the 2 in. Okay, you're probably seeing some more happening now. Remember, we're looking for 6, 8, and 9 that are not in the 3x3. Three three. Well, here's a 6 over here. You we don't need that. That becomes now a 5. Okay. Now, we only have one cell left. And that's really easy to work out. You simply count from 1 to 9. Easy. So let's say 1, 2. There's no 3. Oh, it has to be a 3. Now we've got the whole row set up for future solving. Let's have a look at this one here. We've got basically the same numbers except a minor change. Um, we have a 6, 8, 9, triplet or a 3x3. Three three. And we have two cells that are empty this time. Well, let's go through the same procedure. Any 6 or 8 or 9 that is along here that's not part of the 3x3 the, uh, three three we can get rid of. Well, let's see now. We can get rid of the 8 again. That becomes a 2. We did it above. Now we can get rid of this 6 again. That becomes a 5. And now we have two cells left. And the rule is the same as when you have a matching pair plus 2. When you have a 3x3 three three or a triplet plus 2, it has to be a matching pair. And what are the numbers that are going to be in there? Let's have a look at it. We count up to 9. 1, 2, 3 has to be in here. Uh, three, four. Four has to be there. So we have a three, four matching pair. And that really helps you when you know this little rule. You can get rid of little numbers and finish up with big numbers. Now let's go down to this one here. This is the same situation, but in a block. Yes, a three by three can occur in a block, a row, and a column. In this case, it's in a block. We still have the same three. Uh, three, three numbers, four, six, and seven. Now, we have one cell left. To find out what that number is, we count up from one to nine. 
when I start counting one, it has to be a one. Okay, so we put the one in. That was easy. Now let's go down to this one, slightly different. The three by threes are in different places, and we have two empty cells. So we do as the same thing that we did before. Uh, we find out what's left in, in these two cells because there's only two cells left. It has to be two little numbers in a matching pair. One was going to be one of them, and the other one has to be a, a nine. So we finish up with a matching one nine pair. So that's it for this section. Don't go away. I've got some more to show you. Okay, have a look at this one. It's an easy one. We have a column in which we have a three by three. Again, it's in this case, it's a six, eight, and a nine. Eight, nine, six, nine, six, eight. Only those numbers could go in those three cells. That means if you have an empty one, it's easy to work out what that is. We just count up to nine. One, two, three. There's no three, so this becomes a three. That was easy, now you get the hang of this. That becomes a three. Whoops, not a very good three, but it's a three. So, watch now. I have put together, actually I've created this puzzle to show you how all these can fit into a puzzle. And on top of that, I got a special surprise. Now, I've designed this puzzle just to show you the three by threes plus one plus two working. You may be able to see that I've put some of them in just to help things go quicker. That when I first look at this puzzle, I immediately see on this top row uh, there's a 1 8 matching pair. 1 8, and I'm going to use the blue this time because my red was giving me troubles cleaning the board. Here we go. Now that was just stood out. Now we have here, in this little section here, a 3 by 3 and two left over. We should be able to work out what these two numbers are. Can you work out what they are? I'll leave that for you to think it through in the meantime. So let's push on two. We would do, we have twos in here. We've got a two here, possible a two there and a two there. Okay, threes. Now here is a here is a here is a three by three plus one. Now we know the three cannot be there, but the three cannot be included in here. And this is one of the problems I have with a lot of students who decide that they want to put extra numbers in here. No, once you've got a three by three, only those numbers stay there. It's like a matching pair, the same thing. Now, that means that the three has to be here. Now, what, ha what see what happens with that. Top, bottom, middle could be over here or over here. But there's a three there. So this becomes a three. If that's a three and that's a three, we can have a three here and a three there. Oh, that was good. Let's go on with this particular section in here. Uh, we were up to three. Fours are all there. Fives, only one five. Uh, sixes. Sixes. Oh, we've got some things happening here with the sixes. Top, bottom, middle. A six could be in here. Let's look down. There's a six here. There's a six here. So that is where the six goes. Now, let's go in down in here. I've just noticed something. You can get this six down in here in two ways. Have a look at this. We have a four six and a four six, which means that this has to be a four six. And there's a six here, so that means that this becomes a four, and that becomes a six. Now we could have done that by just saying, well, we had a six, a right, center, and left, and then we could work out the four from there. But seeing that pattern makes it go quicker. Okay, now what about this four that we put in? Six, six, or oh, the six. Can we do something with that four? Yes. Let's have a look. Uh, middle, top, has to be along the bottom. There's a four here and there's a four there, so the four has to go here. Great. Now, let's go, we've got eight, nine. There's a nine up here, nine here. There's, it could be a nine in here and a 9 in here. We could also go down 9, 9, 
There's a nine here, can't go there, so it can be there. Now, um, I'd like to just mention um, this two. See this two here? It has to go there. There's going to be a three by three in here. The two cannot be in there. It has to go there. It cannot be in there because there's a two there. So this becomes a two. Now, let me see. Now we're at the stage where, okay, um, take this three. What's going to be in the middle here? It's going to be a three, uh, a seven, and an eight. Well, here is something that we need to know. If the three is going to be in there, one of these is going to be a three. And if the two is there, one of these is going to be a two. Did you work that out before? You could have worked that out when we had uh, three by three plus two. It's a matching pair. Now, um, let's look at let, let's let's look at this. Here's the three by three here plus two. Let's look at ones first. There's one in there. There's no ones up in here. So that means one of these is going to be a one. One, one. So this becomes a one. Okay. Now getting back to the threes here. We had a three and a three. We have a three. This is a three by three. So there has to be a three, seven and an eight. Well, this is where a seven is going to go. Now let me explain why. You cannot have an eight in here. There's an eight already spoken for. There. The rule of exclusion. This has to be a seven because it can't be a three. Remember we have three, seven, eight. There's a three over there. It cannot be an eight, so it has to be a seven. So we're left now here with a matching pair of three and eight. Let's take the three. Uh, here's a three. Can it go up there and down here? No, it can't. It has to go here and here. So one of these is going to be a three. So we'll put those two threes in there. Okay. So that means that this is going to be a three. Therefore, this is the only one left in that block. And it has to be an eight because we deduced that three, seven, and eight had to go in there because it was a three by three. Now we've only got one left. That's easy. It's a it's a one. Okay. Middle, right, left. One of these is going to be a one. Now, let's look at this again. This is a very interesting situation. Because this is a one eight nine three by three, you cannot have an eight nine there. That has to go. Okay, it's the same applies to what we did in the in the in the row and the and, the, and so on. We did those first examples. So this now becomes a two. Okay, this now becomes a two. Two, two, two. Now I don't know about you, but I have just noticed here a cleaver. Remember a cleaver? We have a three, three, and a three, three. That is the blade of a cleaver. And when you see that pattern, you know that three has to be up in here on the handle of the cleaver. If you're not sure about the cleaver, I'll give you information that on that below in the video. So now, if a three goes somewhere in here, it can't be there because of that three. So it has to be here. So let's see if there's any room for them to get rid of that three. So now this one becomes a three. Wow. And we're only left with one along here, and that has to be a five, I think. A five, okay, we'll put the five in. Five, 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 that works. Five, five, five. This, this could be a five, and that could be a five. Okay, we can put a five in there and a five in there. Now, when I put this two in, I suddenly noticed this when I was looking over here. We put this two in, we can get rid of that two. And so this now becomes a big two. A big two. Let's run that out better. A uh, big two. Now, 
getting back to here. Look, we've only got one left in here. That has to be a seven. But if you see something, you put it in straight away. And I was thinking about the five here. Five, five, five. There's a five, five. There's a five can go there. Well, that's good because we can get rid of this five. Okay, we can get rid of that five. And this becomes the five. Okay, so that becomes a five. And this remains a nine. Okay, now we have some interesting things happening. Let me see. Um, there's only two left in this row. Well, that's easy. It is a one, seven, a one and a seven. There's a seven up in here, so that becomes a one, and this becomes a seven. Now let's look to see if there's any ramifications for that. Well, uh, if that becomes a one, this one goes. Okay. Uh, now if this becomes a seven, Right, left, this becomes a seven. Now what we've left in this block, guess what? It's two cells left and it has to be a, a one eight because of a ma matching pair in two cells left in a block, row or column. We're really moving along here. Now, here we have, uh, let me see now, gee whiz. Down in here, if this is a three, one of these is the three. This is the, oh look, we've got it from here. I'm seeing all kinds of things. You've probably seen them and saying, hey, but what, what, what about that? What about that? Yeah, there's a lot of things, a lot of things happening now. Um, we are looking at, uh, what's the best route to take here? Four, three, okay. Um, I'm just thinking, oh, that two should go because we've got the two over here now. We have a matching pair. Okay, now let's look at this. Didn't notice this before. Here's a seven, there's a seven. That seven goes there, which means that this seven goes and that becomes an eight. Okay, that becomes an eight. And therefore this becomes a seven. Now, if that's a three, I'm not sure what happened, what's going to happen in here. That's a two, three, it's all there, two, two, two. Oh, a, you can't have a two, two. Yes, you can. When we had this two up in here, two, two, we could have a two there. Wow, well, look what that does. It goes, makes this a three, and this a two. So that becomes a two. And that's a three. If that's a three, this three goes, and this becomes a three. And if that becomes a three, we have two left in here, and it has to be a one, 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 and a nine, nine. It has to be a one and a nine. One, nine. Things are moving along here. Oh, I can see something interesting happening here. We'll see what we we'll, can. There's one left in here. What is that? It's a eight. It's an eight. Let's have a look at the ramifications of that. That way is fine. This way, this eight goes, and this becomes the one. Therefore, that can't be a one, and we're left with an eight, nine matching pair. That fits, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine. Okay, now let's have a look at, uh, up, in, up in here somewhere. Let me see. We have one, seven, eight in here. One, seven, eight. Hmm. Seven, eight. Here we have one, seven. Oh, there's a seven in here. Look, I didn't get rid of the seven. So this becomes a seven because of that seven. So this now becomes a seven and we have a one, eight matching pair. Oh, nearly missed that one. Seven, seven, seven. One, eight, one, eight, one, eight. We've got a lot of pairs of one, eight, eh? Now let's have a look at this, this row. Well, guess what? We have another 1-8 matching pair. And here we have a 1-8, one, 1-9-8. Eight, one, There's only three left in there, so here we have an 8, a 1-8-9. Here we have a, we can't have a 1, it has to be an 8-9. This is the time when things get exciting. 
Remember I mentioned at the beginning, a puzzle cannot have two solutions or two answers. And now I see here what is called, what I call, a danger-danger rectangle. Let's show it to you. Here it is here. 8, 9, 8, 9, 8, 9, 8, 9. And if I were to put a 1 up there, that would get rid of this 1. Uh -huh. That would leave an 8, 9, 8, 9, 8, 9, 8, 9. See, the key about spotting this is to spot it early. Now, I discovered this by accident. I didn't realize when I designed the puzzle that this was going to happen. So, what do we do about this? It can have two answers. If I put a, a one uh, here, there's going to be two answers. Let me just take this off so you can see what I mean. If that one goes there, this is going to be an eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine, eight, nine. Look, you can have an 8, 8, 8, and an 8, 8, 8, or you can have a 9, 9, 9, or you can have a 9, 9, 9. Two possible answers. That's a no-no. A true uh, Sudoku puzzle cannot have two answers. So what do we do about it? Well, in, your, in my previous tutorial, I found one of these and we discovered that that definitely was to have to be the one here by doing the rest of the puzzle. But it doesn't always work that way. So how do you do it now? You say to yourself, I can't afford to put a one here because that will cause a danger, danger, unique rectangle. We don't want two answers. So if I rub this out and put a 1 in its place so that the 1 is there, I'm now wrecking the concept of two answers. There's only going to be one answer. Now let's see what happens. If that's a 1, this becomes an 8. I'm going to go like crazy now because we're almost at the end. Uh, that becomes a 1 over here. Okay. And that becomes a 1. Okay. This becomes an 8. This becomes a 1. All those 1 8s are going to start to happen now. This becomes an 8. If this becomes an 8, this becomes a 9. Okay? So that becomes a 9. So we no longer have a danger, danger. That 9 is goes here, so this becomes an 8. Now we've completed that column. Um, now, because we had this 9 over here, and that 9, and that 9, this has to become an 8, because that's an 8 there. This has to become a 9, sorry. 9. Okay, we've got that row done. Now, we're, we're getting down, we're getting down to the end. Oh, let's come over here now. There's only some numbers left over here. This 8, this is neat. This 8 means that that 8's gone, so that becomes a 9. Okay, and therefore this becomes an 8. If that's a 9, and that's a 9, this here has to become a 9. And therefore, because there were two 9s there, two 1s there, this has to become a 1. And let's have a look now. Whoopee! We did it! Don't go away. I've got one more thing to tell you. Thank you very much. We now hit 55,000 subscribers. And I've got some news coming up for you as well, coming down the tube. Bye for now.